Hey guys, this is Camo Kid here, and today I'm going to have a comprehensive view over the Cold Steel XL Voyager. The blade length is five and a half inches, and uh, the specs on this is about 7.2 ounces. Uh, one blade that I'm missing from the collection is the Tano blade, but I know someone else who has it, and they're extremely happy with it, so I'll just take their word for it. But uh, throughout this review, uh, I'll I'll go with my own testimony of what I've experienced with both blades, and we also have some further testing with water bottles, Milena rope, and also some uh, water hose as well. But anyways, my impressions about these knives, they're absolutely incredible, especially for the money. Uh, I believe at Knifeworks or Blade HQ, you can get this for around $55 to $60. And the amount of knife that you're getting for the money is incredible, uh, the strength, uh, the blade length and uh, just the overall fit and finish is great even these fasteners are really nice uh, and I also on hand I'll have ready my brother's Emerson knife uh, and I'm going to uh, compare it a little bit uh, first off this knife is made in America so the price is going to be extremely increased with this blade uh, how much did you pay for this Austin? I want to say around 250 around 250 dollars and this is around fifty to sixty dollars, so you could easily get four or five of these for the same price as this. And uh, the lock is obviously going to be stronger with the triad lock. You've seen multiple videos and different channels, and Cold Steel's channel itself of uh, this knife doing incredible things. It, and it's almost like a fixed blade like strength. And uh, of course, it's not a fixed blade. Lynn will tell you it folds, so you definitely you want to be careful and not do anything foolish. But uh, this knife, I looked it up this morning, it's a seven ounce knife. And this knife, these two knives are 7.2 ounce, ounces. And you can see how much more blade and reach that you get. And uh, overall, I think this is just a better knife. It's stronger and the value is uh, way better. And if you look at these knives as a uh, defensive blade, something you might carry instead of uh, a firearm, which a firearm is gonna be superior, but, 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 but depending on your uh, laws you might not be able to carry like in California so uh, these knives this is you know I I definitely recommend this over this uh, next I'd like to uh, oh yeah and one more thing this fully serrated blade you can get this for like 60 bucks like I said and this totally dominates the uh, the spider Co civilian the civilian has a needle sharp tip and it's very breakable even uh, on the box they tell you don't use this in like a normal everyday use it's uh, it's intended for a self-defense knife but as far as self-defense goes I'd rather have one of these in my back pocket rather than a Spyderco civilian any day uh, now the knives are a little bit different as far as you know the G10 handle and everything but if you want a knife strictly for self-defense this is the way to go uh, another thing that I'd like to address is the fasteners on this are uh, extremely well built. We have Torx fasteners here. And if you're into knives at all, you have, uh, I believe this is a T8, and this is a T6. Uh, they're made very well. Same thing with the, uh, these are T6s on the pocket clip. And uh, I don't need to mention, but it also you can carry it. If you're left-handed, it comes with the extra pocket clip. And I'm not sure if there's any other companies out there that really think about that, but this is a totally ambidextrous knife, and uh, the the screws, the pivots, they all come Loctited from the factory. So if you're out in the field, uh, it's very unlikely that a screw will come loose. Now I have had uh, this uh, clip come loose, but uh, that was probably me messing around with the clip, and then I forgot to Loctite it. But if you buy an Emerson, on the other hand, uh, and I, I do kind of like this, they're standard, uh, that's a standard and that's a Phillips screw, but uh, like I said, most knife guys are actually going to have the Torx bits off hand or on hand. But these Emersons, they do not come Loctited from the factory. And uh, what now? Microtech. Microtech, yeah. Uh, we got to talk to Microtech over the, uh, at the NRA convention at the annual meeting. And they're really super nice guys. Uh, their quality is extreme. I mean, if you buy a Microtech, you're getting... Uh, what you pay for but uh, they do not lock tight their fasteners and they also uh, there a lot of their fasteners are fasteners that you do not have because they're particular to the company and they explained why 
uh, that is, and it totally makes sense. And they don't want uh, you and me to mess around with the blades and suddenly we can't get them back together. But uh, in my opinion, Microtech, they need to Loctite their stuff. Uh, if they don't want us messing with it, uh, they just need to do that so it doesn't come apart on you in the field when you really need it. But these cold steels, you generally don't have to worry about that. Uh, another thing I like about this plain edge uh, is I use it all the time in the kitchen. Uh, most kitchen knives are actually, they have a longer blade and uh, you can chop up vegetables, sausage, uh, anything as long as you keep it clean and sharp. You're going to be just fine out in, in the kitchen. It also acts as a nice light machete. I say uh, not a heavy machete because although it's a triad lock, I don't really feel uh, you should abuse your knives and you're running yourself at a risk uh, when you ask this uh, under some really hard use, although this is the strongest lock uh, on the market. But just use this as a light machete and I'll demonstrate that here in a little bit. But uh, like I said, I, I use it in the kitchen and it's also a great thing to have when you have a tough, big uh, cutting job. Uh, a lot of people, they carry small knives. I carry a small knife myself, uh, like the Mini Tough Light. This is actually, some people would say that's a bigger knife. But sometimes you run into situations where you need to cut a lot of material in a hurry. And that's when it's uh, great to have a large uh, folding knife such as this Voyager. Here we have some Milena rope, and we're actually going to test out the serrated blade and the plain edge. So I'll set up, and Sean, he's... Uh, Look at Sean real quick. He has this awesome camera and he's going to do some uh, high speed imagery for us. So I just sharpened this after the meat cut test, so we should uh, be fine as far as an edge on this. So, And this is Milena rope, three fourths of an inch thick. It's the thickest stuff I could find at Lowe's. They don't have an inch thick, so this is what we have to deal with. How's the camera looking, Sean? Ready when you are. All right, here we go. We'll try one more time. All right, that cut very smoothly. Uh, did we get that on camera? We did. Okay, do one more for this camera. And there we go. All right. Now we'll try the fully serrated blade. All right. Uh, actually, this serrated blade is a lot easier. Here we go one more time. And we have a messed up cut there. That was very easy. Uh, I like that serrated blade. Uh, again, I was talking about uh, using this as a light machete. Uh, here we have some uh, baby bamboo. It's actually pretty hard. It's not as hard as normal bamboo, so we're going to actually try this. Uh, Try to use this Voyager as a light machete, and we'll also get some more high-speed imagery. So as soon as we get that set up, uh, we'll see what this Voyager can do. We good to go? Uh, go for it. All right. It's a very clean cut, and we'll try another one. And this one right here. Man, that just cuts very smoothly. There we go. And uh, with that triad lock, you really don't have to worry about your uh, fingers. Uh, but also, I mean, just remember, don't put this under extreme hard use because that's just asking for trouble. Um, another reason why I like these Voyagers is you get five and a half inches, that, which that's what I can legally carry in Texas. Uh, but also you get all this handle length. And Austin, do you have Bastinelli's fixed blade on you by any chance? Okay. Uh, this is a beautiful and wonderfully made fixed blade by uh, one of my friends in France. Uh, he is a wonderful channel and he has, not only does he make some really good knives, but uh, he has some amazing cut tests as well. If you like my channel, you'll like his channel. Uh, I, I averagely carry this in my, in my uh, waistband and I don't have the sheath right now, so I'm not going to put it in my waistband. But uh, you can see this is over a 4-inch blade. It's not quite as big as the 5-inch blade, but since the handle of this folding knife has to house this blade, you basically have 
double the reach you would have from a fixed blade the same size. Now this fixed blade is not five and a half inches like I said, but even if it was five and a half inches, uh, an average fixed blade does not have the reach of this blade. So with a pocket knife, you might be lacking in strength as far as a fixed blade goes, but you actually have more reach in a uh, defensive situation, although I don't really plan getting in a defensive situation. But uh, you can be actually further away from the target and you can still have your point in that target. And uh, Lynn Thompson at the NRA convention, he talked about how important uh, your point was on these five and a half inch folders. Uh, even though you have more reach than basically any folding knife on the market, still that reach right there has nothing on a buoy or perhaps a club and you want to have as much reach as possible and that's where uh, these come in handy. Uh, let's see, have we tried the water hose yet? We have not. Okay. First we'll do the plain edge. Uh, water hose is a pretty tough task by anybody's standards, but with these uh, sharp cold steel voyagers, it'll, uh, it'll be easy, hopefully. And we'll get the high speed set up. And try again. <laughs> There we go. All right. Now we'll try the fully serrated blade. All right, about halfway through. We'll give it a little bit more power. Oh, one more try. Okay, that was easy. I just had to prove to myself that these serrations do cut well. And uh, a little friction on the blade, but that's okay. Uh, we'll just put that knife down here. Uh, got some really good cuts on both knives. And uh, if you can bring the speed, you can pretty much cut through anything. Uh, one thing to note about these serrations, after we did the meat cut test with a bamboo, I guess I struck the bamboo uh, with the serration, and we actually have some deforma uh, deformation in the actual serration. So as far as uh, a user knife goes, which I'm a user, uh, I think I still prefer the plain edge. I know how to sharpen well, and uh, when you chip out an edge with a plain edge, you just sharpen it right back up, and you're good to go. But these serrations, if you have heavy uh, deformation, you'll actually have to remove all the serration and uh, because there's no way to fix that dent unless you just grind out the, uh, the dent. Uh, so I guess we have one more cut test and we'll see what we can do with these water bottles. And this is after uh, we went through the bamboo, after the melina rope, and after the water hose. And the meat. Yeah, the meat is, well actually I did sharpen it after that. Okay. So that's not true. but. Uh, so we'll see what we can do with the water bottle cut test. Ready? All right. Not as clean as old Israel. <laughs> Shout out to his channel. Now let's see how uh, this fully serrated blade does. Oh yeah. Oh, just got my knives with. Oh yeah, that's fine. Uh, even though I got it wet, I'll still show you how I normally carry these. Uh, you can carry them in the pocket, put my coat, we'll have a review. Uh, you'll see this knife in the future, that is an amazing knife, uh, that code 4. But you can see it in the pocket, carries just fine, uh, 7.2 ounces, it feels a little heavy in the pocket. But actually, if you put it in the waistband, much like I do uh, this Bastinelli, uh, it carries, I mean, you can't even tell it's in your pocket or in your waistband because all your, uh, a lot of your mass, let's see, that pocket clip isn't worn in yet. There we go. And I kind of tilt it up sideways like that. And I absolutely cannot feel that knife right now. Uh, I sit down in, in college and I can't feel it poking into my side. Now, if you're built differently, maybe you're a little bit huskier. Uh, maybe you'll feel that knife in your side or something like that, 
but uh, I have no problem and it's it's obviously concealed with a shirt and you can get it out reasonably fast uh, with your waistband and then I can go to my other one and I can do a wield or I can hand one off to a buddy or something like that. Uh, but anyways, let's see, I covered the utility, I covered we can use it in the kitchen, uh, had some cutting demonstrations, uh, let's see, all state steel, that's kind of a cold steel, uh, steel standard, uh, and I happen to like their all state, they heat treat it well, uh, I've also watched some other tests and it actually stood up to say 154 cm of another company, I forgot which company they compared it to. But the uh, edge retention actually stood up that long. Uh, one more thing. Both of these blades are beautifully stone washed. And uh, I think I actually forgot it. I brought the, uh, it's in the truck, or it's in the car. I brought the classic Voyager. But uh, we'll, we'll get to look at that some other time and we can compare it. But if you buy one of these blades, you're not wasting your money. And I highly recommend it. Uh, they're tough user knives and uh, you'll enjoy it. If you can carry this legally, uh, I highly recommend it. Thanks for watching, guys.